Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is day eight of Vlogmas. I'm a little behind, so today I'm gonna sit down and film a whole bunch of practical type of videos with tips and tricks and things that I've learned along the way since living in Dubai. Yes, there will be a whole bunch of videos in my Vlogmas series of me, the same hair, same makeup, same clothes, but bear with me, okay? We're gonna get there. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like and share it with all of your friends. I really appreciate it and let's get into it. Today, we're going to talk about getting your degrees or your educational documents attested or you can also call it authenticated in order for you to have them recognized here in the UAE. Uh, a little bit of background, basically there's a lot of document fraud here and CoffeeZilla does a really good um, series on it where he takes you through how certain people instead of completing a degree or a course or a certification they can actually buy a certificate or a degree um, off the black market and the degrees themselves are so realistic that it's really difficult to tell um, just maybe for the naked eye or your average person, whether it's actually um, a real true document or not issued by an educational institution. My educational documents are from Australia. So I am going to go through the Australian authentication process. So if you are from a different country, you're more than welcome to watch. It may be similar or the same for your, um, I guess, where you got your education from but if you did study in australia this is what i did per the website that i'm going to link down below so that's another thing the requirements may change in the future so i'm going to share with you the link that you can go to the official government website that will outline exactly what the steps are you also can attest a variety of documents i noticed throughout this process Sometimes you may be asked to um, authenticate like a birth certificate or a passport. So there's a range of documents that you can um, use this process for, but this one is specifically for Australian educational documents for use in the United Arab Emirates. So if you do want to work in the UAE in a role that requires you to have certain degrees and qualifications, this video is relevant for you. A thing to note is that your employer can do this process for you, uh, but if for whatever reason you need to do this on your own and do it yourself, you do also have the option of using an agent to do it for you. So you'll just pay a bit of a premium on top of the government fees uh, for their services. Uh, but I decided to do it myself and save the money. Although if you do do it yourself, you can always ask your current or future employer to reimburse you. In terms of the cost difference, I when I was looking around at the prices to use an agent, uh, they were charging pretty much double the price that it would uh, be to do it myself. So I thought I'd, I'll just do it myself. So step one was getting a notary to notarize the document. Uh, so they are a certain type of lawyer. Well, they're a lawyer, but they have certain um, powers uh, to notarize your document and uh in my experience it was quite difficult to find uh notaries who were available quite soon a lot of them had limited availability or were booked up um quite far in advance however there were some notaries who um they specialized i noticed in being on call or you know available at last uh, at the last minute because obviously uh, this process can be quite a surprise to some people. I had no idea about it until someone mentioned it to me and I thought it's better to be safe than sorry. So um, before I left to go to Dubai, just in case I did want to stay and work here, I thought I better start the process before I leave. 
Mind you, I only started the process about two weeks before I flew out because it was such a last minute, I guess, decision. Um, so if you've got about two weeks, that's actually not enough time to be completely honest with you. And you'll find out why because there's about three more steps after you meet with the notary. Also, I want to point out that I believe there is a database where you can verify if the lawyer is uh, does have the notary powers and if they are a justice of peace. So yeah, just in case you're concerned about if it's just a random person charging you a bunch of money because it's not cheap. My um, lawyer charged me uh, per document, but others charge for their time and how long it takes. But yeah, it's uh, I think I pay around $200 for two documents. The next step is going to the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, DFAT, D-F-A-T. And I asked for compassionate reasons um, because they didn't actually have any appointments before I left to um, go in person to do the next step of the authentication process. And they actually approved me and fit me in. So that was about a week turnaround from when I submitted my compassionate reasons. And I had to provide proof of my flights and um, when I was leaving and why I needed to see um, someone so soon. So when I got my appointment, um, I dropped the documents off and then I came back two days later to pick it up. So that was the turnaround. They have been encouraging you to use the postal, uh, the mail since COVID. So they actually prefer you to mail in your documents and then insert a return envelope back to your address. But I didn't have an address in Dubai um, yet. So they understood. Uh, a tip is that if for, next, uh, for step three, instead of getting your documents sent back to your home from DFAT, you can insert a return envelope to um, the consulate of Dubai in Canberra. So that's just a little trick because the consulate also want you to do it through mail. And then they're also wanting another return envelope to your home address. So you can also put in um, all of those envelopes there if you have the time and you're more organized. I end up having to get um, someone from Australia um, to then use their address as a return um, envelope. And then what they did for me is um, they went to the post office and then got an international envelope uh, for me and then sent it to my address by the time um, I got to Dubai. I already had an address, so that turnaround was about uh, a week with the Canberra office. And just another tip as well, just to make it easy for that person back at home, I already pre-filled the international mailing details online. Just ask at the post office, they gave me a QR code that I could fill out online. So my friend, when they got to the post office, all they had to do was um, basically hand a QR code that I um, gave to my friend and then all of the details were there. I hope that makes sense but I just wanted to make it as simple as possible. So they just had to turn up, pop in the documents in the envelope. I'm just gonna take a step back. Basically for steps three and four, you need to go on the MOFAIC website. So that's like the Dubai uh, government official website to get documents authent authenticated by um, the UAE officials. So online is where you apply to get your documents uh, attested in the Canberra consulate and then the Dubai consulate as well and you pay everything online they provide um, the shipping details and addresses and all of that so for the last step in Dubai um, that was a bit of a nightmare because I didn't realize that Apparently, you can't get mail sent to an address here. It has to be to an actual PO box or a post office. So 
I found on a Facebook group forum that you can call um, Emirates Post and ask for a courier to come and drop it uh, off to your door. And that's what I did. It didn't come at an extra charge for me, um, which was good because if you do have to go to get it mailed to a PO box, you do need to actually physically go to that post office. And apparently they're really far away. And basically when you're in Dubai, they that last step, they'll give you a mailing, um, address and label that you basically print out and you give it to the courier so you have to book a time with the courier when uh, they can come and pick up the documents from you and then also to book with the courier when they can drop the documents off the turnaround for the consulate was about um so because it's a courier service it was like same day delivery and the consulate turned it around in about one day the nightmare was actually getting the documents um, back to me. It took a week to catch the courier. I don't know what was happening. They kept giving me a time and day of when they would come and they wouldn't turn up. And then they would show up on a day and time that was not agreed on or communicated to me at all. So that was really frustrating. But all in all, the process took a good month to do it on my own. And I'm not gonna lie, I was really stressful. So uh, I had to figure out a lot of it on my own. And I noticed that there were no videos on YouTube in English on how to do the process, which I understand. I think a lot of people just palm it off to their employer or um, get an agent to do it. But I thought if I have the time, I might as well try it out. Anyway, I hope that was useful and of some help to you if you're trying to get your documents attested. If you want more content like this, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like and share it with all of your friends. It really helps me out. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.